Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com uh, nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is doing well. If you are brand new to the channel, welcome aboard, guys. We look forward to have you as a viewer. Uh, we do this broadcast uh, Monday uh, through Wednesday. Sometimes I do it on Thursday and usually on the weekends. Uh, the problem has been the last couple of weekends. Um, we've started kind of a, 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 an extended educational series for all our uh, members. It's on Sundays. It is, we tackle uh, individual issues on an off-hours basis. We tackle them from the technical and emotional side to kind of give a little bit of peace every single week to kind of, you know, continue this journey. Because a lot of times, you know, people uh, talk about different topics and it doesn't really resonate until... It starts building up over time. So we started a weekly series there. Uh, yesterday, we had a two-hour uh, virtual summit uh, with uh, three of our members, two options guys, one equity slash futures guy. We had a great uh, roundtable discussion on uh, different topics. So that's great. So we're just continuous, uh, continuing uh, on the educational journey that never stops. There is no trophy. There is no... Uh, finish line. So I'm not, it's not that I'm neglecting uh, the YouTube crowd. And again, we appreciate you guys for tuning in on the, especially on the weekends is just, you know, my time schedule, especially with my kids is a little bit skewed. So uh, we definitely focus on uh, our inner being, our inner sanctum. And then kind of, if we have time, I'll record the video, but you know, hopefully uh, for all you guys who are joining us, we're planning to join us. There's a lot of really great uh, extended educational value and hopefully uh, you guys will continue to uh, get value. So that's that. So let's talk about the tape. Uh, down today, up 200 points. NASDAQ down, uh, na excuse me, NASDAQ up uh, 25 points. It wasn't really uh, the day that, you know, the technology mega cap names, again, if you are brand new to the channel, that's my, you know, focus. That's like, you know, that's my, uh, that's my little niche. Uh, that is my focus area. Uh, but when those names uh, don't, you know, cooperate or they're stuck in the middle of the channels, I obviously form, you know, take my attention to other names. We'll talk about that in a second. Uh, but today was uh, today. If you traded smaller price stocks, I'm not talking about small caps, micro caps, but if you traded smaller cap names or at least smaller price names, you know, within ten to thirty, forty dollars, those a lot of really great value, and it really does show you. Uh, even when uh, the mega cap names and the majority of them uh, rested today, despite the Qs uh, up 12 cents, you can just go across the board. You can see uh, Microsoft it was not looking great this morning, right? A lot of little, little, a lot of big dumps here at the morning. Uh, Microsoft, you had Nvidia, uh, Tesla, all red, right? They're all red names. Uh, Microsoft, uh, Apple was down two dollars. You figure you turn around, you know, Unity Software has had a big run. You turn around, you go, wow, you know, the Nasdaq must have got smoked. They didn't, not even close. Uh, Nasdaq uh, was actually up uh, 25 coins on the day, but it really does show you it's the smaller value names uh, that really took off. And we'll get to the pivots in a second, but just to give you give you guys uh, you know some names that did really well today. You have Lucid, you know, really good looking chart coming out of a range. Uh, you had Neo today that broke out, right? You had, you had Neo uh, broke out. They came with the 11, 12, and thirteen dollars short term. Uh, short-term expiration, really, really good-looking chart. Carvana went absolutely nuts today, right? These, this is my point. A lot of these smaller names went nuts. Carvana had a great run on Friday. It confirmed the channel. Today confirmed Friday's channel and just absolutely exploded. They were coming for uh, the $40, the $35, and the $40 weeklies uh, when the stock confirmed today. Uh, you had all these three uh, three-dimensional stocks. Remember all these 3D stocks that were like really big a couple of years ago? Well, look at a name like DDD. So you get, an, you have to understand, like this is a market that is so bullish that even when the mega cap leaders are, you know, even being sold, right? And I heard people talk about, oh, maybe it's the rebalancing uh, that's coming up. Who knows? Maybe it is, maybe it's not. I'm going to sit here from now uh, till July the 24th, two weeks. Think about the imbalances. Who cares? Take it day by day, trade by trade. We'll get to uh, the individual names in a second. But for what I'm seeing is, you're getting really good value rotation all over the place. You're getting continuous 
uh, option flow that's hitting the market. And the most important part is if you do your homework every single day, and I, and I, I, I really reiterate this point, especially to new traders, if, if you're waking up literally five minutes to the open and looking at the you know, new high list, you're doing it wrong. You, you're doing it 100% wrong. Your research, and I would say, and for all you guys in the webinar, you probably uh, could probably chime in on this at any, any point. I would say 85% of the things we do every single day is from the previous night's research. Then when you, then you'll have something that you set alerts for. And that's another thing, guys. Keep on setting the alerts. Like eSigma, for example, I have tons of alerts set because not, just because the stock doesn't confirm the next day doesn't mean it will. And I put in a lot of alerts. So when they come, you know, when they come through, I'm, I'm getting a lot of value when unexpected value, especially names uh, that I'm not watching. So you have to put in the work. You have to put in a lot of effort. Do your research because if you go right now and do your research from the night before, you're going to see a lot of great names breaking out. Like I said, look at DDD, look at, you know, look at Neil, uh, look at Lucid, look at UPST had a big, big run uh, over the last couple of months, broke out again today. You know, you have a lot of great value, but you're not going to find that value when the bell opens. Okay. You know, things are moving fast. Your emotional levels all over the place. You can't con control them yet. You're all over the place. You know, social media is saying one thing. The reality is saying another thing. You're here, you're there, and, and you're missing everything right in front of you. So you have to dumb it down a little bit. You have to keep it simple, stupid, you know, the, the whole kiss uh, kiss thing, and do your research from the night before. If, if you go through your charts tonight, especially if you are a player of, of stocks uh, within, you know, within that 10, you know, 10 to 30 to $40 range, man, you're going to get some really, uh, really great value. And going into tomorrow, uh, unless there's some really incredible something stupid that comes out, I mean, we should continue. Uh, we should continue. Look, even Robinhood, right? Bro Robinhood broke out again today. You know, beautiful chart. Robinhood broke out. They came with the 12, $13 calls, even 15s for January. So all these stocks that were neglected for the majority of the year, they're all waking up. They're all catching bids. And it really does show you how much speculation money there is uh, in this market because, again, it's flowing into uh, these names. So, you know, look at, let's look at the indexes, right? Uh, you look at the indexes and you look at the cues. Uh, Bulls actually did a good job to, today. This morning, there was a really aggressive candle, right? You could see, you could see by the charts, really, really aggressive candle today. And just like the same way we saw last Friday to the close, we saw this big candle down. You're saying, so, uh oh, here comes the NASDAQ. NASDAQ has me down like 200. They bought the dip. They really bought the dip and they got the market uh, green. And considering how all these stocks that I just mentioned, the Apples, the Amazons, the Microsoft, the Tesla's of the world, they were all red, two, three, four, five dollars down. Considering what they did, it was a really strong effort by the bulls. And now, you know, they're holding, they continues to hold um, the 20 day moving average. Where it gets a little funky, and you guys write this down, where it gets a little funky is the 6270s area. And again, granted, we bounce off that, but as long as the bulls can continue to hold the 6270s level uh, on the queues, the market will be fine, okay? The problem is if we close below that, and this is what happened the last time we re we tra uh, retraced back to the 20-day, we bounced. So as long as we keep on holding the 20-day moving average, the bull thesis is still kept perfect. As once we start losing it, then we start having a whole different conversation because the narrative uh, will change. Uh, look at the spies. Right, look at the spies. They kind of did exactly the same thing. The cues, they're kind of mirroring each other, uh, holding the rising support. So there's nothing really uh, new materialistic that's playing out, which is a good thing. The problem is in beta land right now, things are kind of in the middle, right? And this is kind of what we talk about. We're not really getting a lot of value tomorrow on the beta names because look at, you know, look at Amazon. Amazon today looked like it was about to fall off a cliff until they reclaim back to 20, right? This one's in the middle of the ranges. Uh, you know, look at, you know, look at Microsoft, right? Down, you know, five and change. They actually broke down and then on the close, beautiful hammer reclaimed the 20 day moving average. You look at Tesla. Tesla is, you know, Tesla, we had a gr really good pivot on Tesla uh, today uh, off the five day moving average, got right down to the 10, really good move there. But now the question is, can, the, you know, can Tesla hold on to the 10 day moving average? Initially, I was going to lead with this video and say, hey, you know what? Tesla's getting very, very close to the 10 day moving average. If this thing starts breaking, we should get it moved down to the 20. But they had a four, four and a half dollar pop uh, at the close, defended a 10 day moving average. So now you have to wait a little bit, you know, a little bit longer for a decisive move in, in either direction. So I think in a weird way, going into tomorrow's session, the value is not with beta, okay? There's not. 
Uh, you know, the only one that looks decent on beta is Square, right? Square is a trying to attack uh, last week's highs, looks interesting. But if you look at everything else outside of Square, uh, very tough charts. They're all in between. So they probably need uh, one or two days more to kind of, you know, work themselves out of the channel to give us a very, very clean look. However, let me give you some names. There's some really, really powerful names that I like coming off the bottom, uh, looking really, really good. Look at Crowdsource. Actually, actually, Crowdsource is beta, right? Look at Crowdsource. First close above supply. If it confirms this channel tomorrow, this thing could wake up. UPST, I really like as well. Uh, if it confirms today's channel, that looks higher prices. Square, we just talked about. Neo, we talked about. Look at a name like DDD, right? Like we talked about a few minutes ago. First move out of supply, same group as SSYS, right? They're all moving pretty aggressively. Watch this triple D. If this thing starts building above today's channel, this thing could wake up, but not even just technology names. Look at a name like Penn, right? Penn National Gaming. You can see here, every single time, the last couple of times it got stuck, right? It tested the 50-day moving average and got rejected. Well, this is the first close over the 50-day moving average. If you've been watching this channel, you know the significance of the 50-day moving average. First close is bullish. First close below is bearish. Like, look right here. Look look at the candle here on uh, February the 9th, right? You see how it closed below this light blue line? That set off uh, a, a, tr a sell signal, right? And the stock got absolutely sold. Now, look what happened here, right? On uh, 427, first close over the $50. Look what the, over the 50-day moving average. It had a nice four-day run. So look what happened here today, right? First close over the 50-day moving average. If Penn confirms, who knows? Maybe you can get a two, three-point run. Uh, that's where it's looking good. Roku, Roku looks uh, good as well, right? First close above supply. It kind of looks like crowd. You know, listen, if all these th stocks start to confirm and even beta wakes up, then the bulls are really, really uh, ready for the next stampede. But again, uh, sometimes bulls need a rest in, in different sectors, uh, different areas. And today it looks like, the, you know, the, the bulls kind of uh, neglected, you know, neg neg neglected the aggressive nature of all the other stocks of the speculation money names and kind of landed at the close. Majority of these stocks, especially that I trade, uh, right in the middle of the channel. So again, we need a couple of days uh, for that to uh, to kind of uh, play itself out. So let's talk about the day. You know, let's talk about the day. Some really, really good pivots today, right? And again, like I said uh, in the introduction, uh, today was all about the smaller price names for the exception of my favorite stock. Uh, Tesla, 72.88, if it builds below, can flush. That five-day breakdown is so good, man. It really is. So it took out the 72.88, initially went down just below 68. A really good trade there. And then later in the afternoon, it just completely died and went to the 10-day moving average of 65. Today's channel is going to be obviously uh, the line in the sand going into the future. It still needs to get above the last two, three days worth of selling to, to really wake up again. Uh, the one note on Friday, and I didn't see anything notable in the options market today, but on Friday, we did see a guy come in uh, betting this week's 287.50 weeklies with 1.6 million dollars so far has not translated uh into uh price per share appreciation but again it's only uh monday so tesla we definitely want to watch on both sides uh this week uh DraftKings went nuts today nice move on DraftKings. 27 uh needs to build here was DraftKings. uh it took out the 27 and basically went to 29 10 cents with a uh 10 cents away from 29 bucks huge move it looks like it's uh, going higher uh, as well. Uh, CVNA went out of its mind. Again, they were coming for the $35, $40 weeklies. Uh, $29.81 needs to build. Here was CVNA. Carvana uh, went to almost uh, 35 today. Huge move. Absolutely huge move. Uh, AMAD didn't trigger. Hood, it's a little bit slower, right? Robinhood is a little bit slower. 10.90.11 uh, needs to confirm. Here is a Robinhood. It confirmed the 10.90.11. I uh, traded up to all the way up to 11.30. This thing still looks higher. Again, you have to be a little bit more patient with this. Uh, Meta, now it's not, didn't get rejected two times at 298.12. It's gotten rejected three times. This is a big, big number. The only thing is they started coming for the August 3.30 and 3.40 calls. If Meta could finally start getting above that 98, 99 level, it could really start to stretch. The problem is it closed about five bucks uh, below that number. So again, like like every other beta name, you have to be a little bit more patient. 
Uh, forget about 32. This thing went to almost 35. Uh, Tesla, right? Right to 265. Congratulations, guys. Beautiful, beautiful move. And not only did we get this 265, I know a lot of people got long uh, off the 265. That's a 10-day bounce. So really, really good move there. And I believe that is it. So that's it. You know, that's it. Hopefully, uh, hopefully tomorrow we'll get uh, some wake up in beta. But if not, again, like the symbols we talked about, there's some really good looking potential for tomorrow. And the key is just stay patient, guys. Stay patient. Let your research confirm. Okay. Don't guess. Don't anticipate. Let your research confirm. Let the option flow start attacking the, that symbol. And if it does and it comes continuous on repeat with short term expiration, usually good things are going to follow. Guys, have a great night, everybody. God bless. And I will see you all tomorrow. Take care.